The Battle of Cannae is a major battle of the Second Punic War that took place on 2 August 216 BC in Apulia, in southeast Italy. The army of Carthage, under Hannibal, decisively defeated a larger army of the Roman Republic under the consuls Lucius Emilius Paulus and Gaius Terentius Varro. It is regarded both as one of the greatest tactical feats in military history and as one of the worst defeats in Roman history. Having recovered from their losses at Trabia and Lake Trasimena, the Romans decided to engage Hannibal at Cannae. With roughly 86,000 Roman and allied troops, the Romans massed their heavy infantry in a deeper formation than usual, while Hannibal utilized the double envelopment tactic. This was so successful that the Roman army was effectively destroyed as a fighting force. Following the defeat, Capua and several other Italian city-states defected from the Roman Republic to Carthage. Strategic Background Shortly after the start of the Second Punic War, the Carthaginian general Hannibal crossed into Italy by traversing the Pyrenees and the Alps during the summer and early autumn. He quickly won major victories over the Romans at Trabia and at Lake Trasimena. After these losses, the Romans appointed Fabius Maximus as dictator to deal with the threat. Fabius used attrition warfare against Hannibal, cutting off his supply lines and avoiding pitched battles. These tactics proved unpopular with the Romans, who, as they recovered from the shock of Hannibal's victories, began to question the wisdom of the Fabian strategy which had given the Carthaginian army a chance to regroup. The majority of Romans were eager to see a quick conclusion to the war. It was feared that, if Hannibal continued plundering Italy unopposed, Rome's allies might defect to the Carthaginian side for self-preservation. Therefore, when Fabius came to the end of his term, the Senate did not renew his dictatorial powers and command was given to consuls Nius Servilius Geminus and Marcus Atilius Regulus. In 216 BC, when elections resumed, Gaius Terentius Varro and Lucius Emilius Paulus were elected as consuls, placed in command of a newly raised army of unprecedented size, and directed to engage Hannibal. Polybius wrote, the Senate determined to bring eight legions into the field, which had never been done at Rome before, each legion consisting of 5,000 men besides allies. Most of their wars are decided by one consul and two legions, with their quota of allies, and they rarely employ all four at one time and on one service. But on this occasion, so great was the alarm and terror of what would happen, they resolved to bring not only four but eight legions into the field. Polybius, the histories of Polybius estimates of Roman troop numbers eight legions, some 40,000 Roman soldiers and an estimated 2,400 cavalry, formed the nucleus of this massive new army. As each legion was accompanied by an equal number of allied troops, and allied cavalry numbered around 4,000, the army that faced Hannibal was likely no fewer than 90,000. However, some have suggested that the destruction of an army of 90,000 troops would be impossible. They argue that Rome probably had 48,000 troops and 6,000 cavalry against Hannibal's 35,000 troops and 10,000 cavalry. Livy quotes one source stating the Romans added only 10,000 men to their usual army. While no definitive number of Roman troops exists, all sources agree that the Carthaginians faced a considerably larger foe, Roman command. Ordinarily, each of the two consuls would command his own portion of the army, but since the two armies were combined into one, Roman law required them to alternate their command on a daily basis. The traditional account puts Varro in command on the day of the battle, and much of the blame for the defeat has been laid on his shoulders. However, his low origins seem to be exaggerated in the sources, and Varro may have been made a scapegoat by the aristocratic establishment. Varro lacked the powerful descendants that Paulus had, descendants who were willing and able to protect his reputation. Most notably, Paulus was the grandfather of Scipio Aemilianus, the patron of Polybius. 
Prelude. In the spring of 216 BC, Hannibal took the initiative and seized the large supply depot at Cannae, in the Apulian plain, placing himself between the Romans and the crucial source of supply. As Polybius noted, the capture of Cannae caused great commotion in the Roman army, for it was not only the loss of the place and the stores in it that distressed them, but the fact that it commanded the surrounding district. The consuls, resolving to confront Hannibal, marched southward in search of him. After two days' march, they found him on the left bank of the Alphadis River, and encamped six miles away. Reportedly, a Carthaginian officer named Gizgo commented on how much larger the Roman army was. Hannibal replied, Another thing that has escaped your notice, Gizgo, is even more amazing, that although there are so many of them, there is not one among them called Gizgo. Varro, in command on the first day, is presented by contemporary sources as a man of reckless nature and hubris who was determined to defeat Hannibal. While the Romans were approaching Cannae, a small portion of Hannibal's forces ambushed them. Varro successfully repelled the attack and continued on his way to Cannae. This victory, though essentially a mere skirmish with no lasting strategic value, greatly bolstered the confidence of the Roman army, perhaps to overconfidence on Varro's part. Paulus, however, was opposed to the engagement as it was taking shape. Unlike Varro, he was prudent and cautious, and he believed it was foolish to fight on open ground, despite the Romans' numerical strength. This was especially true since Hannibal held the advantage in cavalry. Despite these misgivings, Paulus thought it unwise to withdraw the army after the initial success and camped two-thirds of the army east of the Alphadis River, sending the remainder to fortify a position on the opposite side. The purpose of this second camp was to cover the foraging parties from the main camp and harass those of the enemy. The two armies stayed in their respective locations for two days. During the second day, Hannibal, aware that Varro would be in command the following day, left his camp and offered battle, but Paulus refused. When his request was rejected, Hannibal, recognizing the importance of the water from the Alphidus to the Roman troops, sent his cavalry to the smaller Roman camp to harass water-bearing soldiers that were found outside the camp fortifications. According to Polybius, Hannibal's cavalry boldly rode up to the edge of the Roman encampment, causing havoc and thoroughly disrupting the supply of water to the Roman camp.